The vaults were never designed to rescue the people that lived inside them. Instead, they were designed to allow vault to study pre-selected segments of the population under random scenarios, like Vault 69, where women outnumbered men by a thousand to one, or Vault 43, which consisted of 20 men, 10 women, and a panther. But we aren't here to talk about those vaults. We're here to talk about Vault 77, one man and a crate of puppets. When atomic bombs fell from the skies, scorching the earth with nuclear fire, few were lucky enough to survive inside vaults, including a man who entered Vault 77 only to discover that he was completely alone. Before anyone else could make it inside, the vault door was sealed. He tried opening it to no avail, thinking others would be on the way, but in truth, he was meant to be alone. vault wanted to study the effects of prolonged isolation, and this unfortunate soul had been cherry-picked from a long list of people that wanted to survive the end of the world. After four months of living alone below ground with only his thoughts and his own voice, he had come to be hysterical and afraid, spending most of his time by the vault door, waiting for it to open so he could go outside and be with someone, anyone at all. But those in control, the scientists, saw fit to keep him in the dark for a good while longer. One year, three months, and twelve days he had been alone, and you would think that every nook and cranny of the vault would have been searched, and it most likely was, but out of the blue appeared a crate with the words P-13X US Government Issue Puppet Ration, most likely delivered by the scientists while he slept. Opening the crate, he discovered an assortment of puppets. There was a dog, and a man with a crown, a king no doubt and an elderly woman to name a few. And to begin with, he found himself using the puppets, as you might expect. He gave them names and their own personalities, but over time they grew into something else. No longer did he have to try and use the puppets to create a conversation, it just flowed naturally, and he found himself actually listening along while they had their own discussions. The latest of which was the king was going to have a birthday, the elderly woman, who was now called grandma, was going to bake a cake, and the dog, who was in fact a reverend, would be attending. A joyous occasion he was quite looking forward to. But then he heard a voice, a voice like no other. It wasn't like the others, it was more real, and it was coming from the crate. Peering inside, he saw, at the bottom, almost forgotten, was another puppet, a Vault Boy puppet, and he was very excited to see him. He asked the puppet why it was talking to him, and to his surprise, the puppet replied with another question, asking him, why are you talking to me? This was a very good question, but it was obvious, wasn't it? He was talking to the puppet because it had spoken to him first. Feeling overwhelmed by the newcomer, he put it down and went to bed. But during his restless sleep, he woke to the sound of Grandma screaming something about regicide. He rushed in to see what was going on, and on the ground was the king. He had been brutally murdered. His innards scattered around the room like confetti, there was no way Grandma, an elderly woman, or even Reverend Hound, a man of the cloth, could have done something so monstrous as this. There was only one person it could have been. Confronting the Vault Boy puppet, he asked it, What did you do? And he expressed the importance of being honest, but there was something about that smile he didn't like the look of. The puppet looked at him and asked if he was sure he wanted the truth, which he was. And so he confessed to the murder, but made a point of mentioning that he wasn't alone. He had an accomplice, a very large and very lonely man. He was in disbelief. Had he really killed his king? He wasn't sure, he couldn't remember, but somehow he knew that the puppet was telling the truth. And now he was truly afraid. Afraid of what the others would say, of what the others would do when they found out. So he confided in the only person he had. He turned to the puppet and begged for a solution, and the puppet continued to smile and said, We leave tonight. 
Somehow, the puppet had the ability to open the vault door. I suspect the scientists had gathered as much data as they wanted and were now done with him. But on the other side of the vault door, the outside world was dark and things had changed. He worried about what he may find in the shadows and left the following morning instead, before the others would notice he was gone. Outside, he felt better, no longer trapped. Surprisingly, the world was okay. Sure, it was a little hot for December, but he never cared for snow anyway. This new world was fine by him, and to top things off, he even made a friend. A giant mutated ant, which he named Mr. Pinch, who seemed quite happy to be hauling a person and a puppet around the wasteland, at least until they parted ways. After some time, they came across another vault dweller, and together they sat around the fire swapping stories. He told the other vault dweller about his own vault, Vault 77, how it was horrible, really bad, just brutal. It was like being buried alive, buried in a big, clean house with plenty of food and water and puppets, but still, it could have been worse. Speaking of which, his time outside went downhill when he encountered cannibalistic slavers. They tied him up, and for some reason, they also tied up the puppet. Perhaps he wouldn't keep his hands still, or maybe they could sense it, the evilness behind that smile. He tried pleading with them, telling them that the last thing they wanted to do was to mess with this puppet. It was seriously crazy and had killed before, but to them, this story was outrageous, laughable even. So they ignored his incessant begging and instead questioned whether or not he should become a slave or food. They were pretty hungry after all, but maybe they should have listened to him and not their stomachs. Jumping ahead, we see one of the slavers now bloody and afraid. He's surrounded by others and he's trying to tell them something, but his attention is elsewhere. He's paranoid, clearly afraid of something, but he manages to tell them with great difficulty that Bob is dead, that he was killed by the Puppet Man. The others are confused by this. Who or what is the Puppet Man? But their friend was gone again. He's muttering something to himself that he got away. Maybe he wanted him to get away, to follow him to their camp. Was he followed? He hopes not, but then there's a knock at the door and he knows it's him, the Puppet Man. He's followed him here and now he's going to finish what he started. So Vault 77 didn't turn out so good. You've got to remember, the vaults were never meant to truly save anyone. But this was just a story, or was it? At Paradise Falls, the main haven for all slaver activity in the capital wasteland, we can find something of importance. On a shelf in the barracks, a jumpsuit numbered 77, and beside it is a holotape titled Burn This Goddamn Jumpsuit. Like I told you, man, I don't f***ing know where it came from, but it freaks the boys out. Some story from a while back about a stranger with no name. Just get rid of the damn thing. Ain't no good gonna come from keeping it around. Besides, if it is his, maybe he'll come back for it. Comprende? For whatever reason, the slavers have failed to destroy it. Even the one who recorded the holotape, a man named Smiling Jack, has failed. And not only that, but he's also left Paradise Falls altogether, travelling west to Evergreen Mills, where he can be found right at the back of the bazaar, behind countless raiders. It's almost as if he's hiding from something. As to what happened to the Puppet Man, we don't know. But we do know that he no longer looks like a vault dweller. Without his signature jumpsuit, he's almost indistinguishable from one person to the next. He could be anyone, and he could be anywhere. The only giveaway would be the puppet he clutches. Maybe we'll see him again one day. If not him, then perhaps the puppet itself, on the hand of another unfortunate soul, or perhaps inside a crate, waiting to be found. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.